Well, come on and put those hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord and in the land of the living, I dare you just to open up your mouth and give God a praise all over this house. The Bible said, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. If you're free in the house tonight, I dare you just to lift up your hands and give God praise all over this house. I dare you just to open up your mouth, throw your head back and say, God, you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. You didn't have to love me, but you loved me anyway. You didn't have to give your only son, but you gave him anyway. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has made me whole. Thank you for the blood that has saved me. Thank you for the blood that has delivered me. Thank you, Father, for loving me when I was unlovable. Thank you for loving me when nobody else. Thank you for sticking with me when everybody else walked away. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I dare you to look at somebody beside you and say, I don't know what you came to do. Tell them what I came praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we are so excited to be in the house of the Lord with you on this evening. We give honor to Elder Pastor Dwayne Bennett, to Elect Lady Bennett to Missionary Cole. Uh, we love this whole family with all of our heart and look so forward to sharing this time together with you. I thank God for friends and family who have come to be with us on tonight. Sonia and Grandma Pearl, thank you for coming. Uh, we thank God for you. A lot has happened since we were here with you last. As your pastor was sharing with you, my father, uh, who was my pastor, went on to be with the Lord, and I've transitioned from assistant pastor to senior pastor. And so uh, it's, it's a new season in my life. Uh, but we're so excited to be here with you, so grateful for the faithfulness of God in my life. And so I pray that uh, through the word we share here on today that somebody will be encouraged to reach a little higher and run a little further. Amen. Amen. If you will grab your Bibles, let's go to the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, verse 18 through 21. Isaiah verses 18 through 21 of the 43rd chapter. Amen. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Tell your neighbor, that's me. This people, tell them that's me again. Have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. Hallelujah. Father, we do thank you for your presence in this place tonight. Father, we thank you for every believer gathered together under the sound of my voice. Now, Father, I ask that you touch these lips that I may speak as your oracle. Father, let the word of God flow freely in this place tonight. We ask that you touch every ear that it might be a hearing ear, touch every heart that it might be a receiving heart. And Father, when we leave this place tonight, let us leave saying it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. We thank you now that you'll do for us what we're not able to do for ourselves. We thank you for it. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and declare it to be so. Everybody in agreement said amen, amen, and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to look over at your neighbor and just say, neighbor, neighbor. 
Trust God through the transition. Trust God through the transition. One thing you've got to understand is that God is always moving. God is always fresh. He's never stale. He's never stagnant. He's never late. But God is always doing something even when it looks like he's not doing anything. And the truth of the matter is that uh, we are all always in a constant state of transition if we are walking with the Lord. Because the Bible said we're moving from faith to faith, glory to glory, and victory victory to victory. But the truth of the matter is that transition does not always occur swiftly. Uh, transition by definition indicates movement. It indicates transformation. It indicates a metamorphosis. It indicates development, evolution, growth, progression, shift. And it is your ability to make a significant shift that determines your destiny. Uh, there are going to be many shifts along life's way, but there are few that will have permanent impact in regard to your destiny. Uh, if we monitor closely, everybody in here at some point has gone through some transitions in your life. Truth be told, there are some folk going through some transitions right now. Some are going through transitions in the stages of life. Some are going through transitions with careers, transitions with relationships, transitions if you're in your spiritual life. And if you live long enough, if you're not going through transition now, eventually transition is coming your way. And so when you are in transition, it is important to understand that you have to accept the reality that one season of your life has come to an end and another is about to begin. That sometimes you have to let go of what has been in order to embrace what shall be. And you got to understand that when you come to the end of one season in your life, it is because you are coming closer to the promise that is yet before you. I believe that the apostle Paul might have been in the midst of transition when he said forgetting those things that are behind me I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus my Lord because transition often happens behind challenging and painful circumstances realistically some of the shifts that we have gone through have literally been forced upon us they have not all come easy some of them have come out of uneasy places and so this is why we've got to understand that there is a formula for transition and the formula goes a little like this that you must first be transformed in your mind in order that you might transcend to orderly uh, to properly transition so we begin talking about transformation because transformation is an issue of the mind this is why the Bible said be ye transformed by by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when my mind is transformed, I am able to embrace where God is getting ready to take me. Because if my mind has not been transformed, I cannot even comprehend how big God is or what God really wants to do. Uh, if you don't take charge of your mind, mind, you will eventually lose control of your life. In other words, you can't be big if little has always got you. Uh, you can't be great if trivial has always got you because the idea that rules you inwardly will ultimately determine your steps outwardly. And so you got to say, Lord, I thank you for opening up my mind so that now I can see like I've never seen before. God, I thank you for transforming
transforming my mind that I can think on a level that I've never thought on before uh, that I can begin to comprehend that you can do things for me that I never even dreamed possible for you to do and so now because my mind has been transformed I become open to what God wants to expose me to when I allow my mind to be transformed the next step is that my life will begin to transcend see it is our ability uh, our inability rather to rise above negative influences that will come to prevent us from God's plan coming to pass in our life but now that my mind is in another place I find myself in a place that I refuse to get caught up with petty stuff and silly people now I can rise above negativity and still declare that God has a plan for my life I've been transformed in my mind and now I'm rising above certain things there are some things that used to trip you up some things that used to trip me up but now because I've been transformed in my mind when certain things come I don't even dignify it with a response anymore why because I have transcended to another level and see often when you transcend some of the people that you thought were cool with you on the previous level ain't really cool with you no more uh, sometimes it's the folks closest to you that'll be the last one to get the memo that I've sh shifted to another place that I'm not where I used to be I might not be where I'm going to be but something has moved something has changed something has shifted and I have transcended to another place so now that your mind has been transformed and your life has begun to transcend, now you are in the perfect setup for transition. Tell your neighbor, transition. The prophet Isaiah, the principal prophet of the exilic period in biblical history begins to speak in our text. The situation is one that the people of God had been displaced from their homeland. Now they were experiencing great emotional distress. This was a time of great instability, a time of great uncertainty, where they were feeling insecure. Nothing was the same as it had been. They were just feeling uneasy. Yet the prophet of God comes with a word for the people of God to remind them that that though it might not look like it, God is still actively involved in the affairs of your life. That in all actuality, when it looks like God ain't doing nothing, God is up to something good. And I think that it's important to understand that the challenge that laid before them is the same challenge that lies before us. And that is this, that you can either look at your reality and have a pity party, or you can regroup and pull yourself together and get ready to embrace what God is going to do in your life. I dare some folk to make a declaration in this place tonight that I'm getting ready to embrace what God wants to do in my life. I'm going to rejoice about what is in front of me rather than complain about what is behind me. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's ahead of you? is greater than what's behind you. Uh, there are some folk beside you and they don't even realize who they're sitting beside. That you went through so much in 2014 that you'll say, I'm not gonna miss what God has in 2015. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the shifting of the seasons in this year represents new possibilities in my life. It represents new promises coming to fruition. It represents new opportunities that God is about to release in my life and for some of you this message tonight is nothing more than a confirmation of something that God has already initiated in your spirit if you trust God I dare you to open up your mouth and say yes and so and so I don't know about you but I dare you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm just going to trust God through the transition that whatever God wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care if I got to go by myself. I don't care if folk misunderstand.
and me, call me names behind my back, call me crazy, but I refuse to lose. I refuse to miss what God has for my life. Give your neighbor a high five. And so when we look at this, I think it's important for us to understand what the prophet of God was jumping, was dropping on the people of God, which is something that I want to leave with you this afternoon. And that is this, that when a word from the Lord comes prophetically, uh, the word of the Lord has to be received. When the word of the Lord comes to you, it's coming to remind you not to focus on your right now, but begin to consider you're not yet. Uh, that's what prophecy does, is that prophecy will usher you out of your current reality and force you to look at your possibilities. And see, what the enemy likes to do is that the enemy specializes in trying to keep you bound to your current context, to make you think that how it is now is how it's always going to be. But that's when God will come to shake you and to shift you and to remind you that I am yet God and I'm still able to move and I'm still able to perform miracles. Do you not know that God does not send his word anywhere haphazardly? God is a steward of his word and whenever the word of the Lord comes, the word comes on assignment that you have to know that there is no accident in any of you being in the place tonight. For God has so orchestrated the affairs of your life that you might receive this word on this day at this time because God is getting ready to do something in your life. We know that the scripture uh, declares that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that thing that he has sent it to do. Therefore, that means that you are a benefactor of the word of the Lord and you got to know that this word has been sent to confirm what's already been in your spirit. This word has been sent to confirm that God has heard your prayer, that God has heard your cry. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that you showed up in this place tonight because this word is on assignment for your life. Let's be clear. So now, if the word of God is on assignment in my life, then what the scripture opens up by declaring now is that God is sending a word to give me a perspective on my past. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. What is, what is he really saying? Because if you just look at that at face value, it could appear that this is an attack on history. Uh, you could assume that this is an attempt to say that history does not matter, but that's not true because all history is significant. And we should never get to the place that we forget how we got where we got to. We should never forget from whence we came. Uh, you will never be successful in life if you get spiritual amnesia. You got to be able to recognize and embrace that there were some lessons and some blessings in everything that we've gone through. But with that being said, why then is there this kind of seemingly contradictory statement that says I should not remember the former things nor consider the things of old? Well, what it's really suggesting, it is not a statement encouraging you to forget your past, but rather it is a challenge that is being issued not to allow your past to cripple you. In other words, words, God wants to bring us to a place in our thinking that we can acknowledge that I have a past, but my past doesn't have me. That I've gone through some things, but those things don't alter where God is taking me to. Because if you are not careful, you'll spend the rest of your life looking at the past and allowing what people have spoken over you as a reason not to become who God has called you to. Uh, you your history does not stop your destiny. 
and see some folk know what I'm talking about uh, the kind there are some folk who will go through life always looking for folk to feel sorry for them always looking for somebody to have a pity party always wanting you to listen to them recount everything they've been through at 2 30 in the morning just calling you can you just can you just pray for me I'm just going we all have had a hard time we all have gone through some stuff you don't use the whole box of clinics on one person who's telling you the same thing today she was telling you two years ago today uh, look at your neighbor and say but we are in transition we've been there done that got the t-shirt and we are ready to move forward we're not going to get stuck in that stuff this year Oh yeah, but see, you gotta understand that there are some folk who use whatever they've gone through uh, as a reason to continue in sin. That if someone had not done this to me, then I would not be that way. And if someone had not done this, uh, and there are some places for some of that in certain psychological and social arguments. But what I want to declare is that because we are a spiritual people, when you become a new Christian, creature in Christ the Bible said all things have passed away and behold all things become new you've got to recognize that the power of God is available to deliver you've got to realize that the enemy can only have as much authority in your life as you allow him to have okay then I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, the enemy don't run this right here. And see, it ain't over till God says that it's over. And so it's important to understand then how uh, this particular perspective of promise begins to come, pass, come to pass in our life. Look at verse 19. It said, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? God is saying, behold, I will do a new thing. In order to make this transition, you have to be willing to see things you've never seen before. You've got to be willing to go where you've never gone before, to embrace what you've never embraced before. And I came to let Mount Zion know this evening that God is about to do something new in this place, that God is desiring to do something fresh. But in order for God to do that, you've got to have the right perspective. And so the scripture declares, behold that's perspective that says stop stop what you're doing wait look at this and what it is is God saying hey look I'm trying to do a new thing and see that's why he's saying I'm trying to give you a divine perspective on what I'm doing because if you only look at what people try to show you you're going to end up discouraged you're going to end up depressed you're going to end up despondent but he said if you'll consider what I'm trying to show you you're going to be delighted because you're going to see uh, God is showing you that you are walking by faith and not by sight. Uh, so there are some folk who look at you and they watch you in the course of your life and they say, I don't know how you praise him like you praise him. I don't know how you keep your head up when you're going through. Sometimes you just gotta look at folk and say, you might see what I'm going through, but I'm focused on what I'm going to. And I'm going through something this too shall pass, uh, but I know God is getting ready to do something new God is getting ready to do something fresh and because I sense it in my spirit I don't have to wait till I get there to begin to give God praise for what I already know he's going to do I dare you to look at somebody and say his credit is good with me so he said, behold, look here, God is about to do a new thing. Uh, there's something about that that make you, ought to make you want to shout right there. That God is getting ready to do something fresh. That God is saying, I want to do something that will blow your natural mind. But before I tell you what he's going to do, I got to tell you how it's going to come forth. Because the new thing that God wants to do is going to be birthed out of pressure. 
uh, is going to be birthed out of pressure because the Spirit of God wants you to understand, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Well, see, anything that springs indicates that there must be some pressure applied. Ah, that whenever you want to see how this springing is going to work, you might consider the jack-in-the-box. That the reason why the clown is able to spring is because the pressure has already been applied in the darkness and in the confinement of the box. Or whatever you want to look at, if you're going to spring off of a diving board, you can spring because there is tension in the bottom. You can spring forth from a trampoline because there is tension in the springs. And so, in other words, if you want to really know how high God is getting ready to take you then you've got to consider the intensity of the pressure that is being applied to your life now this might not uh, go for everybody but there's some folk up in here tonight who can say I know I must be about to spring because I ain't had nothing but pressure here pressure there here pressure there pressure everywhere some pressure pressure but I just came to let you know that the greater the pressure that is being applied to your life the higher you are getting ready to spring forth oh yeah so that's why he goes through this order remember ye not the former things because you cannot spring if you cling uh, that you gotta let some things go in order that you might get to the next level and see that right there is the challenge that if you can survive the pressure then the pressure is moving you from faith to faith glory to glory and so he said though did ye not know it which implies to me that I can come to certain places in my life that God can be doing something and I'm not even aware of what God is doing. And see, that's why you gotta have a, a certain type of perspective. That's why you've got to be perceptive that sometimes when things are happening and God is allowing this and God is allowing that, it's not that God has left you. It is not that God has forsaken you, but it is because God is moving in your life even when it seems like he's not talking even when it seems like nothing new is going on uh, there's stuff happening and sometimes you get mad and you get upset and you say God I don't understand God said I just want you to understand that I am yet moving on your behalf when you don't see the wind blowing when you don't hear anything in the trees when you don't see anybody telling you anything encouraging when no Nobody is giving you an encouraging word. Just know that even when it seems nothing is happening, I'm still moving on your behalf. You've got to understand that there is nothing happening in your life that is happening by accident. Uh, he's saying that I brought this one in at this time for a reason and I allowed that one to go out at that time for a reason. This job opened up at this time for a reason. I closed that door for a reason. You've got to understand that nothing is happening in your life that is not happening in purpose and on purpose. Uh, you got to understand today this this message that I'm giving you is not a message of inspiration but rather this is a message of impartation this is a message of preparation some of you when you get this word in your spirit you're going to begin to make preparation for God to move in your life and sometimes you've got to move with pain in your heart sometimes you got to move with tears streaming down your face you got to function sometimes when folk don't even understand what you're going through but can I just drop something on you right quick? Can I drop it? Because I see some folk are looking at me kind of cynical like. Some folk are looking like, Pastor, but you, you don't understand the pressure. And I, I know that the word of God declares that he's not going to put more on me than I'm able to bear. But, but Pastor, really, how much longer? How much longer before I spring? 
Well, if you take a look at verse 19, it might provide you some insight because he said, behold, look here, I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth. God is saying, I will do something new right now. And see, there's somebody in this place today, and I don't know what all you've gone through, and I don't know what you've uh, experienced literally, but I know that there's a lot of folk in here who have been under all kind of pressure, and God sent me to release this word to get you ready, because there is some stuff that is getting ready to manifest now. It's not going to be two years from now it's not going to be five years from now it's going to happen now I dare you to look at somebody and say excuse me if I break protocol excuse me if I'm looking funny to you but I believe that God is getting ready to do some stuff right now There are some interesting things about transition. That transition is not always easy. It can cause us to have layers of anxiety. And I know that we're all spiritual and anxious for nothing and in all things by prayer and supplication, you're making your request known unto God. I know that, but let's be honest because sometimes when you go into something that you have never done before, when you go into a new area, when you go into a new season, a new job, a new career, a new relationship. Anytime you step out into the unknown, it can be a little unnerving even to the best of us that sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we're saying, Lord, this thing is brand new. I, I, I don't feel so secure in this place. I, I've never been here before. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to anticipate. I don't even know how to prepare. There are uncertainties and this is what the people of God were dealing with in this particular passage. And so that's what makes this word so real for us because he said, I have made a path for you in the wilderness. In other words, God said, I've already been where you're trying to go. God is saying that I've already been where I'm taking you to and you can make it through this because you can make it through as long as you remember it's God that's taking you through. Because when God is taking you to a new place, there is a promise of provision. And that promise lets you know that this is not new to God, though it might be new to you. But God has done this before. And the thing is, if God has already done it one time, we know he can do it again. Which means now you are in a place that everything you've seen as an obstacle before, you can see as an opportunity now that you've got to stop looking at the seemingly insurmountable things in your life. And you got to say, I got to trust God enough to know that if he's calling me to step out in this transition, he's going to take care of what I can't take care of. Uh, that there are some supernatural and divine orchestrations that are happening in my life and whatever I gotta go through to be where God wants me to be, I've made up in my mind I'm gonna embrace the process. I'm gonna stop worrying about how it's gonna get taken care of and I'm just going to say, God, I'm going to trust you. So when you look at this, he said, I will even and make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God said, I'm not going to trust this to careless people. He said, I'm not going to delegate this to somebody else who may be insensitive to what you're going through. But he said, I am going to step in and I'm going to make a way where you don't see a way. I don't know about you, but I can give him glory right there. Uh, that I know that God's got some good folk, but the fact that he said, I'm going to do this one myself. Uh, that means I know it's a done deal that he said I'll make a way in the wilderness that if you don't think I know how to make a way then just check my record he said I made a way for you to get out of Egypt when you came to the Red Sea I made a way for you to get across there he said when you got to the wall of Jericho I made a way for the wall to come down he said check my record I 
made a way for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Check my record. When Peter was in prison, the church began to pray and I showed up and I was right on time. Check my record. Paul and Silas were in that Roman jail. But the Bible records at midnight, they began to sing and sing praises unto God. And not only did the walls fall for them, but the walls fell for everybody else. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, check the record, check the record, check the record. So then the question becomes, why would God make a way in the wilderness? See, you got to understand that the wilderness, it's that place of ambiguity. It's that place between what has been and what shall be. It's that place between my right now and my not yet. The wilderness is that place that the book of Exodus defines as that place standing between Egypt and the promised land. And see, it would appear that God would give me some kind of exemption at some point. After all that I've been through, missionary, it seems like some way, somehow, we ought to get a free pass at some point. And so we start looking and saying, Lord, if it be thy will, can we do this another way? Just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Our Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass. In other words, even Jesus found himself in a place that he was saying father can we do it another way but he said Lord not my will but thy will be done all oh, the wilderness is a place that'll bring you to the place that you say Lord not my will but thy will be done and so we keep seeing this reminder how God is going to take care of us how God is able to protect us from the serpent, how he's able to keep our clothes clean, how he's able to keep our shoes from wearing out. Even David understood that there's some things I can't go around, but there's something I just gotta go through. And that's why he said, hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That there are some things that you can't bypass there's some things that you can't go around but there's some things you just got to go through but then I find myself asking a question God why would you take care of me like this God said because you are a peculiar people look at your neighbor say that don't mean I'm weird that don't mean I'm strange tell them it just means I'm different Tell them I'm different because of who I belong to. I'm different because of the price that was paid for my life. Tell them I'm peculiar and see, when you begin to embrace the fact that you are peculiar, you'll be all right not getting invited everywhere everybody else gets invited. You'll understand why you don't fit in all the cliques and all the clubs. It's because you're peculiar. But he said in verse 20, he said, look at the beast of the field. He said, look at them, how they just honor me. He said, the dragons and the owls, they just continue to give me praise because they already know that if they're in the wilderness I'm going to give them water they already know if they're in the desert I'm going to provide a river and he said I give drink to my people my chosen he said he's saying look at nature look at the beasts of the field look at the fowls of the air they're not worried because they've been here before they've been in these kind of situations before so they understand that just like the drought comes that they can just roll with it and they just migrate and they migrate because they know just like the drought came the rainy season gonna come too that's why the Bible said in the day of prosperity and the day of adversity rejoice because God has appointed them both and they're both performing a purpose in your life and so the animals they just roll with it and migrate with it because he said they understand that they are my responsibility. They know after a while that the drought is going to be over. They know that
that trouble don't last always. And so they just keep flying. They just keep chirping. They just keep doing what is in them to do because they know that the rainy season is coming. He said, now if that is the beast of the field and that is the fowl of the air, then he said, why is it that my finest creation, rather than praising me, they'll sit down and get depressed and pout and fold their arms and cross their legs and scratch their heads and be worried and nervous like I don't know what I'm doing, like I don't know how I'm going to take care of them. He said, don't you understand? Just like my son said, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither for your body. Don't worry about what you're going to put on. Is not life more than meat? Is not the body more than what you're going to put on? He said, listen to this. Behold the fowls of the air. They don't sow, neither do they reap. They don't gather into the barns. Yet your heavenly father takes care of them every day. He said, are you not much more better than them? He said, let me ask you a question. How many of you can add to your stature by worrying? He said, how many? He said, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. He said, they don't have to work at being who I've created them to be. He said, so if God can clothe the grass of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is gone, he said, how much more will he not clothe you? Oh, ye of living little faith. Why are you worried about what you're going to eat? Why are you worried about how you're going to get your bills paid? Why are you worried about how you're going to put gas in the car? Why are you worried about where the tuition money is coming from? Why are you worried about how you're going to get your books? God said, stop tripping. I've done this before. And he said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. So he said, all you got to do is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that you need will be added to you. He said, stop worrying about next week, next month, next year, tomorrow. He said, because tomorrow is going to take care of itself, but you got to deal with today. So he said, you got to come to the place that you just let go of that. I dare you just to look at your neighbor and say, whatever it is that you're going through. You got to understand that God has got this. Tell your other neighbor, God's got this. Tell them God's got this. Ask them, baby, don't you know who you are? Tell them you're God's chosen people. You're peculiar. You're a royal priesthood. Tell them the favor of God is upon your life. And God is going to take good care of you. God's going to take good care of you. He's going to take care of you so good. Other folk going to be scratching their head trying to figure out how you got what you got. I'm going to hurry because I see some of y'all ready for me to go. But I dare you just to look at somebody and say, I trust him. I dare you to tell him I trust him. Because I can't even explain it, but God keeps making a way. God keeps opening doors at unexpected times. God keeps showing up with unexpected things in unexpected places. And see, I've got to praise him because it keeps on making a way. I dare you to tell somebody I'm in transition. But see, when you are in transition, every act of God requires a response from you. This is where you got to understand how to maximize the power of your witness. And I am almost through, so y'all can relax. But this is how you begin to understand how to maximize the power of your witness. The final thing I want you to see is your responsibility once the power of God has been manifested in your life. God said in verse 21, he has formed us for himself. He said, this people, tell your neighbor, that's me. So you gotta make this thing personal because if the word is always for everybody else, you're gonna keep staying where you are doing what you're doing but expecting a different result. But when you understand this thing is personal and that it's relative to where you are, you'll begin to understand God is wanting to do something miraculous in your life. He said, this 
people have I formed for myself. But there's a reason. He said, for they shall show forth my praise. That there is something in your spiritual DNA that you've got to know who you are. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew the number of hairs on your head. He knew what you would look like and what your voice would sound like. He knew what size shoe you would wear and he knew how you would think and who you would love and he knew how he could trust you and use you. And see, that's why the stuff that took other people out couldn't take you out because there was already destiny attached to your life that all things had to work together for your good because they were necessary for what God was bringing about in your life. Have you ever been in a place where you were just going along in life and everything was going all right and it seemed like God just uprooted all your plans like God just flipped the boat over and turned everything upside down uh, you have that place that you had everything all figured out and now it seems like God just came in and tore it all to pieces and you find yourself saying God why would you allow this to happen like this and God said I had to allow certain things to happen like they happened because if those things had not happened you would have gotten stuck where you were if that had not happened you would have been too comfortable just coasting along uh, just being alright but God said I didn't call you just to be alright I didn't raise you up for you to just get along with the get along God said there's too many gifts on the inside of you. There's too much potential resting on the inside of you. And he said it never would have come to fruition unless I made you uncomfortable until I pushed on you a little bit. Until I pushed you in the pool and made you learn to swim for yourself. God said there's a reason why you had to grow up fast. There's a reason because I've called you to be somebody that is unique. I've called you to do extraordinary things. I've not called you to mediocrity. I've not called you just to get by. And so that's why you can begin to give God glory for stuff that other folk are getting upset about. Because you know when you're going through, you're not just going through to go through. You're going through to get to what God has ordained for your life. And that's why you can say, I know why it came. It might have hurt me, but it came to mature me. It came to make me better. It came to add wisdom to me. So God, I thank you for every mountain. God, I I thank you for every valley. I thank you for the wind and the rain and the storms that you brought me through. Because if I had never gone through anything, I would never know what you could do in my life. If I had never had a problem, I would never have known you were the problem solver. If I had never been sick, I would never know you as healer. If I had never been bound, I would have never known you as deliverer. But God, I thank you. And when I thank you, I can't help but open up my mouth and give you praise. And see, now when I give you praise, I don't give you praise based on what somebody told me to do. Now I'm giving you praise based on who I know you are. It's based on the fact that I've been through some things and I found out that God would make a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said, these people. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you right there. He said, these people have a form for myself. He said, they will show forth my praise. You say, well, pastor, who are these people? These are the people who have gone through the wilderness and came out on the other side. These people are the folk who went through stuff, not understanding what they were going through. These are the people who have been through shifts in their life. These are the people who know what it is to be tore up from the floor. These are people who know what it is to be lied on. These are people who know what it is to be cheated on. These are people who know what it is to be talked about. These are people who know what it is to be laid off. These are people who know what it is to be left alone. 
but these are the people who have gone through incredible private struggle who kept on encouraging everybody else when they needed somebody to encourage them but they kept on showing up they kept on believing God they kept on keeping on these people came to church with the gas light on in the car. These are the people who put their tithe in the offering plate, left not knowing where they were gonna eat, what they were going to eat, or even if they were going to eat. But they said, though God slay me, yet will I trust him. It's for God I'll live, and for God I'll die. These people, he said, the beast of the field honor me. He said, the fowl of the air, they're doing what they're supposed to do. He said, the cows are mooing. He said, the birds are chirping. The dogs are barking. The cats are meowing. The fish are swimming. The roosters are crowing. But he said, I'm waiting on the praise of these people. I wish you would look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got an announcement that this is gonna be my loudest year ever. Tell them this is gonna be my most vocal year ever. Tell them you thought you had seen me praise God before, but tell them because I'm one of these people, tell them you ain't seen nothing yet. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and I that is done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. I said my soul cries hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, where he brought me from, what he brought me out of, what he's brought me through, what he's taken me to, my soul cries hallelujah. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's getting ready to move like you've never seen him move before. Tell him God's getting ready to blow your mind. I dare you to grab your neighbor by the hand. I dare you to shake him like that. And just say, neighbor, this is how your life has been this year. God has rocked you. He's rolled you. He's shaking you. But tell him when I let your hand go, I want you to lift your hand up and I want you to give God a praise and tell him I'm one of those people. I'm going to show forth the praises of my God. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm coming out of this with my hands up. Tell them I'm coming out with my praise intact. I'm coming out with my love intact. I'm coming out with my peace intact. Tell them I'm coming out with my hands up and I'm going to give God praise because I've just gone through and found God to be grateful in transition. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to give God the best praise that you've got. your neighbor and say higher heights, deeper depths, longer links. Tell him I'm going all the way with Jesus. Give him a praise in the house.
count on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations, promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments, church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote.